In three words, how would you describe Phil Aiken? Genius and a good guy. In three words, Phil Aiken. He's brilliant, yet humble. Oh, that's good. Cut. <laughs> <laughs> the influences that I hear in Phil's music are everything from uh, the band, Dylan, um, Joe Jackson, jazz, blues, roots music, gospel. Describe Phil Aiken in three words. Tabasco, duct tape. I get asked about my influences a lot, and yeah, it would be pretty easy for me just to say Beatles, Stones, Dylan, and be done with it. But you know, I I listen to a lot of other things, and I see remnants of those other things in my songs and in my playing. Um, and who wasn't influenced by, you know, the Beatles? Ed asked me to play this gig, this Martha Hoople gig, and I was like, Yeah, sure, I love Martha Hoople. And we played these songs, and then Phil was like, oh, you should sing some more songs and play some more songs. So I did, and then I was kind of part of the band. We played this gig at the Lizard Lounge in October of 2019. And I was on stage getting ready to play, and I looked over, and there was a spotlight on this woman sitting over there. I can picture it as plain as day. It's like, I know her. That's Andrea Ryan. I haven't seen her in 30 years. We hadn't seen each other in forever. That gig changed my life because I love Muppet Hoople so much. I mean, <laughs> it totally did. Like every time I say, I'm gonna do something with Phil Anders, like, that's fine. He, he brought us back together. Also part of that is I, I write a lot on piano. And so there is, you know, I would say there is a Carol King influence, not, you know, via Todd Rundgren in terms of having chords over alternate roots, things like that, things that are quite simple and intuitive on the piano that it, it, it's a different thing on guitar, I say. Lately, I've been getting a lot of Warren Zevon comparisons, which I find really interesting um, because it never struck me, but now that people have said it, I, I definitely hear it. I think it's a flattering comparison, <laughs> frankly. You know, who wouldn't be flattered by that? Well, one thing that might strike people that are familiar with my other work is how concise the album is. Uh, it's eight songs long, as opposed to 38 on my previous release. Um, the songs themselves are not super short, but tightly arranged, except for the very last song on the album, Blessed Lies, which I allowed to go to strange and distant lands. Riches in the world